Good morning. You're listening to WIFO FM in Jessa, Big Dog Country Radio, 105.5 FM. It is now time for the world famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by First Southern Bank, Vans Barbecue, Murphy Builder Supply, and O'Quinn and Associates. Hi, I'm Mandy Yeomans. And I'm Raymond Brown with First Southern Bank. As your locally owned community bank, we're here to help our community grow. Our customers are why we are here. You can tell we want your business. We offer all types of deposit products, personal and business. We have fast, efficient service, and yes, we have online banking too. I'm sure we have an account to fit your needs. Stop by or call us at 912-588-1010 and see how First Southern Bank can help you. For FDIC Equal Housing Lender. When it comes to barbecue, Vans Barbecue and Jessup is the place to be. A small family-owned business located at 1876 on the Savannah Highway. Vans Barbecue has lunch and dinner specials. Stop by or call to make an order. The number to call, 427-3358. Vans Barbecue's new manager is Sarah Van. Vans Barbecue offers potato salad, coleslaw, baked beans, and don't forget their delicious mac and cheese. Also, check out their shrimp plates, the best in town. Yes, when it comes to the barbecue, head to Vans Barbecue, locally owned and operated. Stop by and tell them the big dog sent you. Once again, the number to order, 427-3358. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. Are you looking for an insurance company that you can call and talk to a live person? Are you looking for an insurance company where you can walk in and talk to an agent? Are you looking for an insurance company that offers multiple companies so they can try and get you the best rate? If you said yes to any of these, then you need to call or come by Oakwin and Associates Insurance Financial Services. We offer multiple companies so we can find the best fit for you. Give us a call at 385-1000 or stop by our office at 212 South First Street right here in Jessup. The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. World famous Butch and Bob Show. World famous Butch and Bob Show right here on WIFO 105.5 FM and just a big dog country radio. Good morning, Bob. How's it going? It's going well. Going well? Busy. Well, we're supposed to have a couple of guests. We're supposed to have uh, Congressman Betty Carter call in in a moment to talk about the debt ceiling situation going on there in Congress and maybe a couple of other issues. And then after that, we should have um, Heather Albin in here from the Wayne County Tourism Board to talk about the upcoming Catfish Tournament, which is this weekend, right? This weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. yeah still so. got time to sign up. They said you can sign up as early as Saturday mo- or as late as Saturday morning. So. Late as Saturday morning. Okay. It takes place at the J.C. Fairgrounds, J.C. Landing. You can... All right. Here's Mr. Buddy. Congressman. I'm going to go ahead and put you right on the air with him. Okay. Thank you, Luke. All right. Got that done. That's done. That's done. Take it away, Bob. Okay. Luke. Good morning. We've got the Congressman Buddy Carter on the phone with us. Just saw him Monday at the uh, Memorial Day celebration. But, Buddy, always good to have you here on the phone. Appreciate you being here on the Butcher Bob Show. Well, thanks, Bob. Uh, Certainly a lot going on up here in Washington, D.C. Yeah, that's why we... big day for it. Yeah, that's why we got you on the phone. The House Rules Committee 7-6 vote. The bill comes to the floor today for a debate and a final passage vote. So put on your crystal ball and or look into your crystal ball. Will it pass? Yes, it'll pass. Um, it'll be a combination of Republican and Democratic votes. Um, the fringes, if you will, and by fringes I mean the, the far left, the far right, I'm not sure they're going to vote for it. In fact, I know those on the far right, I know quite a few of them aren't going to vote for it. But I do think that we'll have enough votes in the middle, if you will, of um, uh, of the Democrats and Republicans put together in order to get it passed. So we should should be um, putting this to rest for the next two years um, and at the end of the day. Well, we ran your interview yesterday on the news, and like I said, we talked to you about the debt ceiling. You know, like you mentioned, the people on the far right aren't for it. People on the far left aren't for it, but people in the middle are, seem to be happy with it, uh, seem to be pleased with the agreement was reached. Uh, a lot of questions about will it reduce the debt ceiling, and your thoughts on that. You know, a lot of people are criticizing the 
the deal, but your thoughts on the overall deal, what we will do, what we will not do? Well, first of all, I think it is a good first step, and that's exactly what it is. It's, it's just a step. This is not the end all. It is, it is certainly not the end to what we intend to do, and that is to get back to fiscal responsibility here in Washington, D.C. But I do think it is a good first step toward getting us to, to fiscal sanity back here in Washington, D.C. It will lift the debt ceiling, and it will lift it... Um, you know, there was a debate as to whether we should lift it by a number or by date, and we chose the date, um, or at least the negotiators were able to work out a date, and that will be January 1st of um, 2024. Um, the White House was insistent on that. They wanted to get through uh, the next election, and we certainly understand that. But there were a lot of wins in here, and a lot of wins for the American people. A couple that I want to point out that I particularly like, first of all, the student loan that the president uh, wanted to uh, wanted to forgive, uh, which you know even Nancy Pelosi said he didn't have the right to do that. Well, they've agreed that they will start paying back the loans within 60 days of this being finalized and signed into law by the president. That is pending the decision of the Supreme Court, but I do I'm very confident the Supreme Court is going to rule in favor of the uh, of of him, of the executive branch not having the authority to to forgive those loans, and because I, I think it's quite clear in our constitution that they don't. But the point is, is that it will start within 60 days, and I think that's a good thing. The second thing that I like is that these executive orders, particularly of spending, that now the president, whoever it is, whether it's a Republican or a Democrat, the, the president will have to. Uh, we'll have to undergo what we call, what we refer to as pay go, and that is if you're going to uh, take money out of the budget, then are you going to spend more money, then you're going to have to show how you're going to save that money. Uh, it's, it's got to be an even process. We have to do it here in Congress. Now, there are times that we waive it, and yes, that is one of the criticisms of this part of it is that OMB, the Office of Managing, Management and Budget, will be able to waive it in certain circumstances, but at least it does keep the executive branch honest, and they will have to identify where they're going to get this money for, from if they're going to spend it. So I think both of those are wins for the legislative branch. Whether you're Republican or Democrat, that ought to, that ought to make you happy, because if you're a member of Congress and a member of the legislative branch, that's the way it's supposed to be. And, and I think that's very important. There are other things in there. We go back to FY22 spending for the next two years, which is important, in non-defense areas. Now, defense will go up, uh, and, and veteran benefits will go up. But in everything else that's non-defense or non-veteran, then there will, that will stay the same and go back to FY22 uh, figures, which is, is significant. It's the first time in decades that we've done that. There's also reforms in there to NEPA, to the, um, to the permitting process, and that's very important. That's going to help our economy grow. So there are some wins in here. There are some good wins in here. We're going to call back some COVID-19 money that hasn't been spent. If it hasn't been spent yet, then it's, it's obviously not needed. There's about $30 billion there, and I think that's, um, that's very important. And the last thing I'll mention is the, the work uh, requirements for SNAP and for TANF. And that's very important as well. That's going to help lift people out of poverty. And the work requirements will go up um, in, in age. There'll, there'll be requirements for anybody up to 54 years of age. They'll have to show that they are trying to get work in order to get these benefits. Now, that will not apply to, to homeless veterans. It will not apply to um, single moms. But it will apply to able-bodied adults. That's who it will apply to. Again, if you're just joining us, Congressman Buddy Carter on the phone with us. Uh, how long do you think the debate will go, and when do you think the final vote will take place this evening? It will. I think we're we're slated to go in at six o'clock. It will go. And there'll be a hour of debate, and then we'll vote. So we should have this wrapped up. Um, you know, there'll be delays, and then it's, keep in mind it's got to go over to the Senate, and um, the Senate's a whole different process. And even one senator can hold up that process. And Mike Lee has already said that uh, he intends to do just that. So we'll have to see how it gets through the Senate. But I do feel like um, it'll have the support it needs in order to get through both houses. Now that the, pr 
president has endorsed it and the speaker has endorsed it. And as I say, I think the that, that between the two parties, between the Democrats and the Republicans, we'll have the vote to get this passed. I'm very, very confident of that. You know, as I told you Monday when I saw you at the Memorial Day celebration, I was just amazed that the, an agreement had been reached. Uh, Washington so divided between the two parties. Uh, it was just nice to see McCarthy able to go in there and, and negotiate a deal that he feels is confident and the Republicans can pass. Uh, your thoughts on the job he did? I thought Kevin McCarthy showed outstanding leadership through this. Look, we didn't get everything we wanted, and you never do in negotiations. Um, our two lead negotiation negotiators were Patrick McHenry from uh, North Carolina and Garrett Graves from Louisiana, both good friends, and both did outstanding work in negotiating this. Um, in fact, I just saw Garrett in the in the gym just a few minutes ago, and we talked about it, about um, how difficult a process it is. Um, but they both did a great job. Again, you never get everything you want, but that's the way negotiations go. Um, you know, keep in mind that this is the first time that we've really gotten these kind of wins in, in negotiating uh, an increase in the debt ceiling. Even during the Trump administration, we just had clean, uh, clean raises in the debt ceiling, clean, clean increases in the debt ceiling, so we didn't really get anything out of it. This time we've got something out of it. We've got something to show. And keep in mind also that this is the first step. This is not the end all. This does not mean that, oh, you've made all the cuts you're ever going to make. No. This is only the first step in the process of bringing back financial sanity to Washington, D.C. So I'm very confident we're going to be able to get this done. Yeah, and just want to go back to Monday's, uh, your th uh, you were the guest speaker at the Memorial Day celebration, great crowd on hand, just want to get your thoughts on that. I know you traveled to other places and other ceremonies, but just uh, give, us, give us your thoughts on the ceremony that took place here at Wayne Memorial Hospital at the Memorial Wall. Well, what a great, what a great um, program, what a great, um, just just to see the community come together. I mean, it's a beautiful area. And right there under the shade trees and the, the monument is, is so attractive and uh, plenty of parking, just a great location. We thank the hospital for their donation of the land there. But all the volunteers who, who put in so much work, you know, we look at things like this and we just think, oh, that just happens. Well, no, there are people who put in a lot of work to get this done, and there were a lot of people we put in a lot of work to get this done, and now it's something we can all be proud of, and certainly something that that is well deserved of of those who paid the ultimate sacrifice to to for us to recognize them and never never forget what they've done for our country, for us to enjoy the freedoms that we enjoy. We owe everything to those who gave the ultimate sacrifice, and to our veterans who served our country. Yeah, speaking of war, the war in Ukraine continues. I did see on the news the other day where uh, apparently Ukraine's uh, bombing places in Moscow, and the Moscow people are finally waking up and realizing they're in a war, whereas <laughs> Putin's uh, propaganda has told them otherwise. So your thoughts on the progress that they're making, how long is this going to drag out, how expensive is this going to get? Well, obviously, as you point out, um, Ukraine has gone on the offensive, and we're glad to see that. And that's something that needs to happen. They need to be successful. We need them to be successful. If they are not successful now, after uh, all the, the the money we sent them, after all the aid that we sent them, then you know we're going to be in a mess. And and you're right. I think they're getting the attention of the on the world stage. And I think that um, you know I, I hope that it's going to end soon. We all do. We all want to see it come to a, to an end. But at the same time, to see Ukraine fight back and to see what these people have done is, is just so inspiring for all of us, and especially for democracy throughout the world. One final question. State of Georgia is going to be in the focus of the world uh, next week. They've got the big Republican event in Columbus. Uh, the Republican Party here, uh, Governor and other people opted not to attend. Will you be attending? And your thoughts on what all is going to take place in Columbus next week? I'm actually filming a video today to to be um, played at the at the convention. I won't be able to be there, but the reason why is because it's my family vacation. Um, and, and we 
my family vacations one week a year. This is the one weekend that everyone's together, and it, the timing just could not have been worse. Um, I hate to miss it. I would be there if it were not for my family vacation, but but look, my family has to come first, I'm, and, and we'll be at the lake with everybody, and I'm, I'm sorry I'm missing, but I am going to, as I say, uh, record a video today that will be shown there. I just want to get your early thoughts on this. You know, several people jumping in the race. DeSantis finally got in. Trump's leading. Uh, how do you think this is going to play out before it's all said? And I know it's early, and they say, you know, don't look at what's taking place right now. It's a long way to go. So how do you think it's going to play out? Well, I, I think that we're going to be successful in the Republican Party because I think it's about policy. Um, we need to continue to to stress that, that that this is about policy, and we're right on policy. You know, the media wants to play up to the personalities that that are involved in this race, but at the end of the day, I think the American people understand that the policies of the Republican Party are what are going to carry our country into the future. Um, it, the, the democratic policies that we've experienced over the past two years under the Biden administration, the past two and a half years, have failed. Um, let's face it, our, just our economy, and people vote with their pocketbook, and our economy was humming two and a half years ago, and then the first thing this president did was to de declare war on fossil fuels, resulting in higher gasoline prices, resulting in higher inflation, resulting in higher interest rates. Now we've got a mess in our economy. On the world stage, we're no longer um, respected like we were two and a half years ago. The debacle in Afghanistan and what happened there and, and everything else that, that has happened, the southern border, uh, you know, just goes on and on. It's been the failed policies of the Democratic administration and the Democratic po uh, Party. And I think that Americans are, are going to, to vote, and, and they're going to vote for the Republican candidate, and I look forward to it. Buddy, always good to see you. Like I said, it was good to see you Monday at the uh, Memorial Day celebration. Uh, I know you had to fly back to Washington, but uh, always good to have you here on the show. Appreciate your comments and uh, look forward to the vote tonight on the House floor and see how it all goes out. But um, hopefully a, a deal will be reached and uh, they'll be able to move on and try to work on that debt. So anyway, appreciate you being on the show. Always good to talk to you. Thanks so much. Thank you, Bob. All right, take care. All right, Congressman Betty Carter here on the world-famous Butch and Bob Show here on WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessa Big Dog Country Radio. And, Bob, I don't see Heather. <laughs> I don't see Heather either. I, don't, I, I, I was waiting for Heather to walk through the door there. To you know, We kept you know, it's on the board. making the, the long um, the interview longer and longer, hoping she would uh, show up. But apparently something must have come up this morning. But uh, Heather Altman from the Board of Tourism was supposed to be on the Butch and Bob show this morning to talk about the upcoming catfish tournament. Well, I'll just give the details. Just I'll go say, ahead and give the details, I'll Bob, say, since she's not here. And it is this weekend, the Wayne County Catfish Tournament, June 3rd and 4th, again, set for. The time is Saturday, 12 noon to Sunday, 12 noon. This year's event offers fishermen an opportunity to win a $7,500 first place payout with other place payouts determined by the number of entries into the event. Weighing in tournament headquarters will once again be at the J.C. Fairgrounds at J.C. Landing. Those fishing the tournament can put in anywhere on the Ultima River, but they must be in line at weigh-in at the fairgrounds by this Sunday at 12 noon. Tournament officials ask entrance to please note you must come to the fairgrounds to receive your T-shirt. Entry fee for the event is $100 per fisherman. Again, a minimum of at least two fishing in a boat. Big fish pot entry is $10 per fisherman. Registration can be done online at www.active.com. can be dropped off at the Tourism Board's office at the depot. Registration packets available online or the Jessup Train Depot. And if you need more info, call the Tourism Board office at 912-427-3233 or check out the event website at waynetourism.com. You can also register on site Saturday morning. And the fish are out there waiting for the boats June 3rd and 4th in the annual Wayne County Catfish Tournament set for this weekend on the Altamar River. So appreciate everybody. I'm sure they got a big bunch of fishermen ready for the big event this weekend always a big event the catfish tournament yes it is lots of money handed out lots of winners and prizes it's fun and to watch uh, the way in there yeah it's fun to go out there and watch the big fish come in and weigh them in and on the sunday big old catfish hanging out there huh? <laughs> that's a monster in that river sometimes they set records so you just don't ever know some big old catfish in that river I want to come in, Stanley Todd went to Ray House's funeral yesterday, and Stanley Todd officiated it, but did an excellent job. You know, former commissioner, so told some, you know, some jokes about the mayor casting a tie vote, things like that. So it was, it was 
I thought Stanley Todd did an excellent job yesterday at the funeral. Good, good. And Commissioner Cockfield spoke about his friend, so it was a good crowd on hand. But like I said that f- funeral took place yesterday. So yeah, that was just shocking news. We heard yeah, that, you know. I said they got their big meeting coming up on Tuesday, June sixth. So like Stanley said, it's going to be weird, you know, looking to his left and Commissioner House not be there. But right. um, that's the sad story of the weekend. Yeah, yeah. 105.5 FM and Jessup, Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO. Continue on with the show here. Bob, anything on your mind this morning? Anything going on you want to talk about? Well, it's like, good to see they're making progress on the EMS. You know, still working yeah, on that. Yeah, Trying to get that worked out. So Get those three ambulances session, going. Right. Yep. So that was part of the work session. They got was their good meeting. job by them. Their meeting takes place uh, Monday, June 5th. So the 1st of June uh, this week and then the meetings next week the county meets on monday city meets on tuesday so a lot of meetings taking place next month okay well good job by the county commissioners getting things moving forward with the ems trying to get um what we can all feel secure that if something happens to us an ambulance is going to show up that's something yesterday when they mentioned in there in the meeting that at one time all three ambulances were out at the same time they go on a lot of calls. Man, you know, it's a sad story down on Jekyll Island. Uh, that was the grandson. A lot of people know Clifford and Carlitha Davis. That was their grandson that was found in Jekyll. You know, he was at a church camp and uh, went missing. They had a bunch of people down there. A lot of volunteers from Wayne County went down there and helped as well. But again, a 20-hour search took place, and 16-year-old Connor Mathis' body was found by law enforcement. Again, the cause of death is uncertain. Again, they're do an autopsy i'm sure but it's under investigation but that teenager was found 2 p.m yesterday in the water near jekyll island sonar was used to be able to find the body so just a sad story and again our thoughts and prayers go out to clifford and carlitha davis again that was her grandson that was found just day on jekyll island around 2 p.m just a sad story jeez it's got to be careful when those those kids are in and around water you know, this kid had autism, so like I said he disappeared. They, they had a huge surf, but thanks to all the volunteers that went down there, and, you know, I know a lot of people from Wayne County went down there to help with the search. They had thousands or hundreds of volunteers down there from all around the area down on Jekyll yesterday looking for the body, looking for the kid. So but again, the body was found around two o'clock yesterday afternoon. So, so again, just our thoughts and prayers go out to the Davis family. Yep, yeah, sure does. You know, there in sports, we were talking about the, uh, you know, SEC with Oklahoma and Texas coming in. The word is that, that, that just, you know, looking at something right here, that, it, that, that nine games, nine conference games is basically the only choice for the SEC. It's not the only choice, but it, it's probably talking, the obvious talking choice. eight or nine. Kirby said it really doesn't matter, but I watched a lot of the SEC coaches on Paul Feinbaum's show yesterday. They talked about how in four years the good thing is that you'll play every – team in the sec you'll go to every stadium and everybody will come to your place as well in the four-year period so the four-year period right so that's that's the goal is to have those those kids experience going to every college in the sec every campus and every campus comes to every school comes to their campus as well in the four-year period so okay uh, how are they going to divide up Oklahoma and Texas? How are they going to divide east, west? You I know? think it's going to be one kind of the way. I understand it's, just, it's not going to be an east and west. It's not going to be well, how are they going to have the SEC tournament? Everybody's going to well, you take the top two teams. They're going just to the top them, two? That's what the word is. So That's what I understand it's going to do. They're going to throw them all in, in the same division, and top two teams play for the SEC championship. So hmm. See how it all plays out. There's not going to be an east and west. And that's yeah. starting in 2024? A couple years. Yeah, a couple years. Not yeah. this season, but the next no, season? I think it's the next year. I think they yeah, right in 2024. They, they vote to yeah. let them in early. So. It'll be interesting. Texas and you know, Texas got a big you – know, Sarkeesian's on a hot seat. So, they suppose they have a real good team this year. So, we'll see how it plays out. But they say if he doesn't win this year, he's going to be gone. So That's the way it is in every coach nowadays. You know, if you don't win, you're on the hot seat. I saw Billy Napier – being interviewed yesterday, I said he's already on the hot seat. He's only been there one year in Florida, but they're already upset. <laughs> already said, on the hot seat? Already on the hot seat. One so, year, um, and you can already feel yeah, the heat a little bit. He, he, huh? say, he says he understands, you know, when your your program years ago, you know, won national championships and you're not winning SEC titles. I said they've only 
I think he's, uh, I can't remember, the, three times in the last, whatever, 10, 12 years. So I said he's he's feeling a lot of heat down there in Gainesville already. So it's tough. Sam Pittman, Arkansas, was on you know, he said the same thing. He said, you got to win. You know, they're upset because he hasn't been able to beat Nick Saban yet. So but those those meets taking down in Destin, Florida. People say that place is beautiful down there in Destin. You ever been to Destin? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've yeah, had some says, Georgia Association of Broadcasters it's a beautiful uh, summer place. conventions down there. My sister's going there this it's beautiful. summer. Yeah, that, so, but everybody, everybody's been to Destin and said that's just a gorgeous place, beautiful beach. So I put that on my bucket list one day and go to Destin, Florida. Yeah. But those meetings are, you know, I said all those coaches are down there. It'll be football season before you know it. I said it's right around the corner. <laughs> It's amazing how there's one sport that people seem to talk about pretty much all year long, you know. Uh, they had the AD, or not the AD, they had the Georgia president on there. Jerry Moorhead was on Fine Bomb Show talking about how they're doing pretty good in most sports, but the baseball program's lacking, so they looking for a new baseball coach at Georgia. They yeah, well, what, happened, what happened there to yeah. the baseball coach at Georgia? I can tell you exactly what happened. You don't, you don't redshirt your best player when you sign Luke Boykin, you put him in the outfield and play him. <laughs> He deserved to get fired. <laughs> I went to Gainesville and see him. I walked by the deck. I said, "Where's Boykin at? What are you doing? You don't you don't redshirt your best player. He deserved to get fired." That's well, why, that's why he got fired. Lock it, loaded, take right, it to the bank. That's right, why. Mom, that's why. Whatever you say. That's a fact. <laughs> Talk to yeah, all those players. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm telling That's you, fact, yeah. you don't you don't red shirt you don't red shirt your best player. Yeah, you sign mm-hmm. him, you put him on the outfield. Mm-hmm. All came down to one player. That's exactly what it was. Bad decision. Uh huh. Fire him. All right. They did. They did. He's out of there. He's out of there. Georgia looking for a new baseball coach. Well, they did end up suspending um, um, Chase Elliott for intentionally ramming Denny Hamlin. They say you intentionally did it. Yep, they, they're saying that. he I did. To, I have to check out it. Yeah, I, it when I was watching the race, I thought it was just that he got pushed into him or something like that. But apparently, you know, Denny, I mean, Denny thought it was right off the bat. And, and then I guess once they uh, looked at the film from all angles, uh, he's been suspended for a race. And so, um, you know, you can't intentionally do that, you know. So, um, and they said the chase was a little teed off because he had pushed him up or something. And, you know, racing's knocking. So, some knocking you can get away with, and some knocking you can't get away with. And in this sure. situation, Chase couldn't get away with that knocking. Watch Days of Thunder. They'll teach y'all about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great movie. If you ain't trading paint, you ain't racing, right? You know, they got those composite cars now. Tricker said. Yeah, those composite cars where the. It was not the metal on the body. It's composite. So when they hit each other, like, you know, coming out of the pits and just on the, on the, on the track, you know, it's not bending in. It just gives in and comes back out. So you got those composite bodies these days. It might be one of Robert Duvall's best roles in that movie. He did such a good job. Oh, Robert movie. Duvall did a great job in yeah, that, that, yeah. that was a great movie. Yeah. That was a really good movie. I remember that way back in the day. No telling how old that movie is. It's still pretty good. I have no idea when that movie came out. It was 80 sometime, wasn't it? Was it 80? Yeah, I think it was 80 sometime. I think I was still living up in South Carolina at the time when it came out, if I remember correctly. That's when uh, Tom Cruise met Nicole Kibben. You know, she right. played the doctor, and that's how they met, and then ended up getting right. married. So, um, I think that was it. You seen any good movies lately? I saw the Fast and the Furious movie. That was an excellent movie. What? Was that called Fast X or something? Fat, I think it's a six. Yeah, Fast X or something. Fast X or Fast 10 or something like that. That was a pretty wild ending. I can't give away the ending, but one, no. lady, one lady was shocked and got real upset. What, there in the, in in the, the movie theater? Yeah. Yeah, she yeah. got shocked? And she, she just she started, was shocked. She started, started, yeah, started yelling and screaming. Like, I mean, I was like, calm down. It's okay. <laughs> it's just a movie. It happens all it's the time. It's pretend. It happens all the time. It's pretend. <laughs> Somebody came back from the dead. It's pretend. But she was freaking out. So, but that was an action-packed movie. Well, yeah. we usually are. It's yeah. amazing how that franchise has continued to to be so popular after all these years. You know, 
It just like it just shows you the, the creativity of the uh, of the, the writers, the, the producers. Good, the good producers news is, the good news, you know, there's another one coming. And the way the movie ended, you just know there's another one coming. Yeah, so yeah, just like yeah, they just keep got it another, going. One, another yeah. one coming, another one coming. Great stars in that, those movies, but this one was action packed from start to finish. It thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, it's kind of like Mission Impossible. Tom Cruise, they just you know keep putting them out. Not as often as the Fast, Fast and Furious, but they still keep putting them out. All right, Bob, we're just about out of time. I am. Sorry, Heather didn't make it. I said she's on the board, though. Be on the board. But <laughs> something must have come up. All right. World famous Butch and Bob show right here on WIFO 105.5 FM and Jess of Big Dog Country Radio. Coming up soon, you're going to have a chance to um, win a Wild Adventure ticket voucher. Good for four single-day admissions to Wild Adventures Park. Get ready to win that. And we've got the news from Fox News coming up in a moment. Stay tuned. When further treatment is no longer an option, hospice can provide services to manage symptoms and difficulties caused by illness. Emotional, psychosocial, and spiritual care, as well as support to the families and caregivers, are all part of hospice care. Hospice of South Georgia has been a part of the health community in Wayne and surrounding counties since 1998. The professional yet compassionate attention provided by our staff is unsurpassed. Widely supported by donations from the local population, Hospice of South Georgia is the local nonprofit hospice in Wayne County. Our administrative office is located at 1625 Sunset Boulevard.